an Irish man walks into a Spanish bar to watch a game of English football. That sounds like uh, the beginning of a good joke, right? But it's actually the beginning of a good life. In this video, I'm gonna share with you three of the biggest lessons that I should have learned when I was around a month away from alcohol. It took me over three years to actually learn. So I'll stick around till the end and I'll explain to you exactly how it took me three years to learn this stuff. If you don't know me, I'm Kevin O'Hara. I own habitsfeed2.com. We coach people to stop drinking alcohol in the most valuable and positive way possible. First, just let me explain that this video only applies to people who wanna use stop drinking alcohol as a launch pad to grow and focus their lives on living the best lives that they can. If you're gonna stop drinking alcohol and you just wanna look for another quick fix distraction, then this video is not for you, right? So, all right, onwards and upwards, eh? All right, so going back to the beginning, I was going into bars when I should have been just avoiding them like the plague, right? In my defense, I'd just stopped drinking alcohol in the middle of the football season, and I wasn't gonna miss watching the games, right? So I had to go to a bar. I'd been going to this same bar since we arrived in Spain a year before. So, you know, the lads that were working there, I knew, uh, I knew the owner and a few of my friends were going there. They were all supporting the same team, right? So, you know, this is five days after I stopped drinking alcohol and I'm walking into the bar half an hour before kickoff. So there's, there's hardly anyone there yet, right? Um, and I'm thinking, this is good because I'm feeling nervous, right? And I was feeling nervous. Uh, I thought my biggest challenge was gonna come from my friends who were gonna take the piss out of me. And I thought, I'll get in there early, I'll get settled, then, I'll take each of my friends as they arrive, right? Famous last words, right? Um, the guy behind the bar, uh, he's the owner and he supports the same team that I do. And he immediately starts talking about the chances of us winning today. And again, that's what I'm expecting. So I'm a bit more relaxed about the whole thing, right? So, and then he asks the question, right? And it's only one word, pint. <laughs> and I'm... I'm stood there, he's already got the pint glass in his hand, he's already got the other hand on the, the, the pump ready to pull the beer, right? And I'm stuck, uh, and he's waiting for an answer, and I'm stuck. Um, but whatever connection there is between my, my brain and my mouth, that part has just stopped working, and I'm stood there like an idiot, tongue-tied, and feeling like, uh, feeling like my whole face is going bright red, right? And he says, again pint and you know he's looking at me like i'm an idiot now and i'm thinking he's thinking i'm an idiot now you know and all i want to say is yeah give me give me the beer give me the beer i want the beer i'm salivating like a dog you know and i just have to nod so eventually i managed to blur out what i wanted to say all along and that's orange juice and i add i'm driving i don't know why i added that but that's what i added he pours the pint um, I still feel like I'm doing something wrong. I feel like there's something, you know, there is something wrong with this. I'm not used to it, you know. Um, and I go upstairs anyway, bring the beer. I'll bring, but I go over to my chair that I normally sit in, sit down, and one by one, my mates show up. And as I suspected, most of them make a comment, right? Hey, hey, Kev's on the hard stuff. <laughs> oh, Kev's turned Muslim. What's happening to you, mate? What's this? All this kind of stuff, right? It's just banter. And I think because I'd done the hard part at the bar, I'd already said to you, man, uh, I'm driving, or I'd ordered my pint and I got over that hassle of ordering my, my drink. Um, my answer to everyone then was, I'm driving. You know, and it was a funny thing because it, it wasn't really an excuse because I always drove. Um, my mates always drove, right? So. You know, look, at the end of the day, you can only go from what you know. So the first lesson I should have learned is that you focus on what you control and what you can control in the moment. Right? I could have controlled things a lot better by not going to the bar, right? That's one thing. Um, it's one of the first things I tell the lads I coach, right? Don't go to bars. But I haven't missed a match in such a long time that there was no chance I was going to miss that. And like I said, it would have caused more problems than it would have solved, I think. So I controlled what I could control. I focused on the football. I switched out the beer for orange juice and I watched the match and didn't hang around after the, 
after the game had finished, right? So, you know, in the early days of this journey, everyone is trying to live an alcohol-free life without any experience of how actually to live that way. And I think that's one of the biggest problems that we face into is not only do we not have the experience, but we don't have the self-belief either about that. And you know, self-belief, self-confidence is one of those things that's going to push you forward in this. And as I said before, a lot of this is about skills, it's about learning the skills. Uh, you know, if you don't have something, if you don't know how to do something, it's not that you're stupid, it's that you don't know how to do it, but you can learn. And, you know, we're, we're really thrown in at the deep end with this kind of thing. You know, it's difficult to know what you're supposed to do or when you're supposed to do it or how you're supposed to do it. So without any solid experience to pull from, all you can do is adapt to what you're already doing and modify it just enough so that you can make the changes happen without getting overwhelmed. And then it makes the transition away from being a drinker a lot smoother. If you're finding this stuff helpful, hit the like button, press the subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any future videos. So let's go a month later, right? It's the same bar, it's the same friends, but now I think it's my eighth match that I'm going to since I started this journey, right? So that's eight times I've gone through the same sequence. I've arrived at the bar, I've asked for the orange juice, eight times I've sat in the same seat, eight times I've watched the match, eight times I've gone through the, the whole taste of the orange juice thing, um, eight times I've spoken to my mates, eight times I've left the bar early, right? Um, after the match or, you know, as soon as the match is finished. I think it was around that time, the eighth time, that I remember one of my mates saying to me, he was asking me, I, you know, are you off the alcohol for good? And I thought about it for a second and said, do you know what? Yes, and it was the first time that I'd said it to anyone outside of my family that I think I wasn't going to drink again, right? And do you know what he said? He said, uh, you're better off, uh, you know, and that's, it's one of those things that I think, you know, with somebody outside of yourself, you know, even though it doesn't matter that much, it can sometimes give you a big boost to have somebody outside of yourself, right? You know, it surprised me that he said that, um, but it really put me into a, a comfortable headspace, if you like, right? Um, it was, it was something that, you know, after eight times of doing this, I comfortably got into that, um, into that sequence. I changed that one sequence and all it took was to repeat it, um, to repeat that same sequence eight times. Do you get what I mean? So it's, it's like, if you're changing one small thing at a time and then you do it as a repetition thing, then um, you'll get comfortable doing it that way. You know, I was comfortable sat there with the orange juice. I was comfortable sat there with the orange juice with my mates watching the match, right, in that same position. So I'd created another sequence for myself. So the lesson is that this is how all of our habits are structured, right? First, you have the individual thoughts and actions, right? Uh, and these thoughts and actions are connected in sequences with a beginning, a middle and an end. You know, these always happen in a certain context. And it's these contextualized sequences that become habitualized in our lives, right? You know, you can't look at something like it's a habit. You have to break it down into what it actually is. If I say to you, break this habit, what are you breaking? So, you know, an example is, you look forward to going to a match, you go to a bar, you order the same thing, you sit in the same place, you talk to the same people, you watch the same team, you watch the same players. And the more you follow that same sequence, the more it becomes a part of your overall habit, right? Of that overall part of the habit. You know, when you're trying to break down your habits, some types of sequences, they're just gonna be as plain as day to you. You know, like this one, it's, it's obvious what you're doing. You know, you're going to the bar, you, you, you know, just what I've said. Um, and the solution is obvious, right? There's obvious solutions that you can do, right? So, you know, one is don't go to the bar. The other one is drink orange juice instead of uh, ordering the beer. So the problem is that there's, there's other sequences there's, um, which are much more difficult to pin down. There are sequences that you don't realize are happening the mindsets, the ways of looking at things, the stories that you tell yourself. Um, there's a lot more 
complex sequences where one sequence bleeds into another sequence where there's a lot of stuff happening in the unconscious mind that you don't understand and you have to bring that conscious unconsciousness into the conscious mind in order to deal with it you know so look the biggest lesson of all came later on if you're looking to stop drinking alcohol and use it as one of the biggest windows of opportunity to grow your health your relationships and your wealth go to habitsv2.com you know and the third lesson right um go back to the same bar but this time a couple of years later and again this is something I should have understood a month after I'd stopped, right? I should have copped onto this, but you know, there's a lot of things happening. And for one reason or another, a lot of these lessons are just not learned, right? Uh, it took me over two years to learn this one, but you know, there it is. I've done a couple of seasons watching the, uh, the matches in this bar at this stage. Uh, same bar, same friends. Uh, I think the ownership of the bar actually changed. There was another guy that took it over, but he was a he was a fan of the same club as well, so it didn't really make that much of a difference. And the new season's about to begin, so I think it's two and a half years, so two two years, eight months actually, because it was August when we're starting out in the new Premier League season. And I'm trying to get into it, you know. I'm watching those first few matches, but it just wasn't the same. You know, there was a there was a huge disconnect for me. You know, the, the attraction of me being in that bar had uh, kind of fizzled out as, you know, as we're, we're progressing through life. So we stopped going altogether. You know, one of the biggest benefits of stopping drinking alcohol is that you have a bit more money. Um, I had a lot more money after two, two and a half years, right? You're saving all the money that you save from not buying the stuff and all the other crap that you're buying. Plus, um, I was just earning more money because my brain is in a better place, right? So we got a car at this stage. Um, we also got a, a subscription to, um, so we could watch the TV, uh, watch the matches at home, right? And, you know, these blokes that we were going to the pub to watch the matches with, they were mostly retired expats. They were pensioners. And, you know, they're lovely people, but they're concerned about pensioner stuff, right? Um, Watching the footy on the TV at the weekend is one of the highlights of the week for them. And for me, a lot of my values had changed. I was growing a business, actively trying to improve myself. I was experimenting a lot with myself and I just wanted to grow. I wasn't winding down in my life, right? And, you know, like I said, it's been two and a half years since I started this journey. Um, you know, I've done a lot on this on this stuff. I've done a, I'm coaching people now from all over the world, you know, about alcohol and it's just making me feel uncomfortable being there and talking to people like that, you know. And if I'm being honest here, the team, um, you know, it wasn't the best time for the team. You know, we, were, we weren't playing well, we were scraping through games. Um, without that alcohol numbing my brain, I just couldn't listen to the moaning of the other people about the team, the manager, uh, who should have done what, when they should have done it. And it was, you know, a bit depressing and it wasn't something that I was looking forward to doing. So. The pub, the other drinkers taking time out of my day to go to the bar, drive to the bar. You know, I was, like I said, I, I was doing a lot more and um, I was really enjoying what I was doing. So all of that became pointless. Now, I found this time and time again, that when you're, um, when you're a drinker, the main star of the, of the show is the alcohol. And you have all these other um, things in your life that are there because you're a drinker, because you're drinking alcohol. And it's like the supporting cast of, of the show, if you like. These are the things, the events, the ways of doing things, the people, all that kind of stuff. And much like the star of a movie is the glue that kind of holds the whole storyline together, the mood, the believability, the, the other actors maybe, you know, all that kind of stuff. The alcohol drinking is one of the things that it's the glue that holds all of these other things together, the thoughts, the actions, the behaviours, the likes, the dislikes, the mindset, you know, the people that you hang around with, all those other things, right? So the alcohol is the fuel for the habit, and once the fuel is gone, the habit can't sustain itself, and um, it's going to die. So a lot of the simpler sequences, they're naturally going to fall apart. Uh, the more distance you put between yourself and between your old self and your new self, um, between that new person that you're building. You know, for me, once I had an alternative of watching the games at home, um, watching the games in the bar just wasn't fun for me anymore. And that died a natural death. It took a while, but it happened, right? So 
some of the more complex sequences, they're going to need a bit deeper understanding and a lot more effort to, to work out, right? But, you know, you know, this work can be challenging, but it's the best work that you can do. You know, in my 11 years of being alcohol free, I've completely transformed myself inside out um, by thinking um, by thinking this way, by breaking things down into their really simplest components and working on things from that level. And this approach allows you to really systematically dismantle the old habit and build new, um, healthier patterns. And it's, it really is a journey of self-discovery. It's a journey of growth. Um, every small victory that you have just reinforces that new way of living um, and pushes the old identity back you know the more work that you do on yourself moving forwards the less you have to do on that other stuff you know we spend a month in our program dealing with um mindsets and you know how to deal with cravings but we don't deal with it like you would normally deal with it you know we don't focus on that we focus on where you're going what you want to do in life you know who you want to be the, the outcomes that you want in life. And when you focus on those types of things, then it makes uh, everything else so much easier, right? All of those other things, the cravings, all of the, the, the stuff that used to be part of your, your alcohol life, that disappears. It just extinguishes itsel itself without any work. So there's five things that I want you to focus on before we stop. First, what you focus on is what you get. Second, leave the alcohol behind when you stop. It just doesn't have a place in your life anymore. Third, focus your mind on the outcomes you want, not on what you don't want. So don't focus on the cravings or the discomfort or any of that shit, right? It's all gonna do you harm in the long term. Focus on where you wanna go. Next, break things down bit by bit and build things up brick by brick. And number five, anything that you lack, you can learn. You know, most of what you lack are skills and all skills are learnable. So I said at the beginning that I'd explain why it took me three years to learn this stuff, right? And, you know, it's what I said earlier. You know, when you stop drinking, you've got no experience in life as an adult, or at least I didn't, um, about what it was like to live without alcohol. You know, everything was new. Once you take out the alcohol, everything that used to be associated with alcohol has to change in one shape or form. You've either got to get rid of it or you're um you're changing it right you're altering what it is and there was nobody around back then when i was doing this when i was starting out this that was um giving this kind of advice right um you know my first three years i'd say uh i had maybe 50 clients and um 50 lads that i was coaching and that's in the whole three years and i didn't start coaching until i got past that first year so really it was um one client uh, it was 50 clients in, in two years and I'm on my own journey I'm piecing this stuff together I learned so much um, from coaching those lads earlier on um, I was coaching I was adapting as I learned and for me you know it's about seeing the patterns in your life it's about seeing the patterns and the outcomes that are coming so identifying which patterns lead to which outcomes and you know, when you can see, well, this pattern uh, is you do this, this and this, and then you get to this outcome, right? And it's easy to see a pattern once you know it's there, you know, once you've got experience of that. So that's what I'm saying to you at that beginning. You know, you're walking into this as a, almost as a blind man because you, you've got no experience of, of what, how to change things, what to change, um, you know, who to be with, who to avoid, all that kind of stuff. But once you know that the patterns are there, you can structure the patterns to get the outcome that you want. And nine times out of ten, when you follow a certain pattern, you're going to get um, a certain outcome. When you follow patterns, you'll get the outcomes. I, you know, I'm not a particularly fast learner, but I've learned to stack skills as, a, as I've gone along. So you learn one thing and you use that one thing. And then you, you uh, learn something new, another skill and you use that skill in your life and then you can start using a combination of skills and you you learn something else a little easier or a little faster learning from other people really accelerated things for me right um it all helps if you you have an eye on the positive outcomes that you want in life and you've got patience um 
you know, once you've got those things, you've got patience, perseverance, perspective, and uh, positivity in your life, all of the rest of the stuff will come to you, right? So, you know, that's why it took me so long to learn those things. You know, it's it's only in hindsight that a lot of these patterns become visible. It's only in teaching other people that they become visible. And then they become completely obvious. So um, it is where it is. Look, I'll leave it there for today. Take care of yourself. Keep the alcohol out of your mouth. And uh, onwards and upwards. Take care. Bye now. <music>